Hey guys, there's the Call of Duty Gamer here, and in this video, this is a video that probably a lot of you were waiting for. It's a comparison, comparing Black Ops 3 and Advanced Warfare. Now, this will go pretty in-depth, although it won't compare stuff like individual weapons and stuff like that. It'll more compare stuff like score streaks, movement, gunplay, map design, and like the one-hit-kill melees, stuff like that. Stuff that we can almost be certain won't change going into the real game. Because I don't want to make a video like this and then have all this stuff change when the game comes out. So, a lot of the stuff that I'm going to be talking about are pretty broad topics, but there are a lot of them. So, the first one we're going to talk about are the score streaks. Now, in Advanced Warfare, if you put on a score streak, and they're not very good. The main thing, Advanced Warfare, is customization among score streaks. But you don't really unlock this until you unlock your first customization for score streak, like level 10. But you don't unlock full customization until like level 25 or something, which can be very frustrating. Because, for example, obviously stuff like the UAV is fine, but stuff like the Assault Drone is absolutely terrible. Unless you put machine gun or rockets on it. And so, it's just stuff like that that makes score streaks not that good in Advanced Warfare. And plus, I find that they're harder to earn in Advanced Warfare. I don't know, I just find that like... People, when you get scores, one, when you, they're, either it's because I'm better at Black Ops 3, which I think I am. My KD was 1.5 in Black Ops 3, and it's 1.13 in Advanced Warfare. But whenever I earn a ton of score streaks or get a great game, people start to drop out of games in Advanced Warfare. And I can understand this. This is because some of the score streaks, like System Hacker, are just so frustrating that you want to quit the game. If someone, if a team, like, gets a System Hack with... Exos disabled and extra time twice, you're done. You're gonna lose the game. Because the other team's hopping around and you're just running around on the ground and your mini map's disabled and it's harder to see enemies. I mean, there's just no way you you can fight against that. Uh, which I find annoying because a lot of the airbase score streaks, uh, the thing that makes them counterable is stuff like rockets to take them down as well as you can equip blind die. But something like System Hack, it cannot be fought, which is really annoying. This is actually not true. Uh, system Hack can be fought with Hardwired. So Hardwired basically just disables System Hack. It allows your exosuit and stuff to not be affected by System Hack. The problem is that this is in the Perk 3 slot. And there are two crutch perks that are in the Perk 3 slot. Toughness and Blast Suppressor. And to have to choose Hardwired over one of those two, I'd even maybe even choose Hardline over hardwired because there's just three really good perks that are already in that perk selection and it's like I don't want to have to choose hardwired over those three crutch perks because it's just not worth it so I mean yes this map can be fought against but you have to give up a lot in order to fight system hack. now black ops these score streaks are very good um, some of them even too good. I find that the Hellstorm should maybe be 800 points because every time I get it, it's just, you're gonna get a kill almost every time. And it, it just has such a wide spread of rockets that you can get a lot of kills with it. But, again, not gonna try to go too in depth onto that, but these score streaks are very good in Black Ops 3 and there's no customization. Next is movement. So, in Black Ops 3, they added a boost timer and... The rockets in the jetpacks in Black Ops 3, they're more like boosty instead of like hoppy. Like you, you have to hold it down in order to boost higher. Where in Advanced Warfare, you could just double tap and you'd go really high. You also can't like exo boost to the side like you could in Advanced Warfare. And if you're spamming your boost, you won't be able to boost, which I think is a good idea. So that people aren't hopping around all the time. This really results in Black Ops 3 being a more ground based game, like when you're fighting. And the movement um, ends up kind of affecting the gunfights. In Advanced Warfare, you'll see some of the gunfights in the background are me and this, these guys going in duels where we're both hopping around. Like, 1v1 duels, like, obviously it's not a 1v1 game, but we're me and this guy are going at it, and we're both hopping around, and you go through, like, one or two magazines we both do trying to kill each other. This is just so hard to track your targets when they're jumping around like that. That's why in Black Ops 3, I like it a lot better, because... You can fight the entire game on the ground and you'll be fine. They also added in wall running in Black Ops 3 and swimming. Which I think were both good additions to the game. The only one unrealistic thing about swimming is if you try to shoot a gun underwater, the bullets will die instantly. They Because water cannot support the uh, 
the speed of the bullets, it just, they die immediately, but it's still a cool concept and very cool um, gameplay. But the next topic we're going to be talking about is gunplay in these games. Now, I find that the time to kill in Advanced Warfare is just slightly quicker. Um, that's just me. You guys might think differently, but it could either be, be because there's a lot more weapons that fire faster in Advanced Warfare. I find that to be the case. Uh, I could be wrong, and but the overall time to kill is sort of similar. I mean, neither of them are as quick as Ghosts, which I think is good. But in Black Ops 3, I find that if someone's shooting at you, you have time to turn around and take them out. Or in Advanced Warfare, I just find I have a little less time. That's better for the gunplay, really. I'm not going to go in-depth on the guns because, again, that could change a lot when the uh, beta comes out. Sorry, when the full game comes out. Next is map design. Now, we did only have four maps in the Black Ops 3 beta, but all of them had the three-lane system. Whereas in Advanced Warfare, some of the maps did. Uh, quite a few maps had three-lane system, but they weren't as like specific as the Black Ops 3 ones were. Now, the main difference, and obviously some of the new maps that come in Black Ops 3 could change, is the map dynamic events in Advanced Warfare. So you can get map-based score streaks that you can only get on that map, like the tram in Detroit or the solar reflection tower on solar. There's also stuff like the tsunami on Defender, and there's just a lot of dynamic events um, on maps in Advanced Warfare, kind of like Levolution in Battlefield, that aren't in Black Ops 3, at, at least at this point. Um, this is just a minor detail, and this is comparing to Advanced Warfare, and I know they won't change this. So whenever you get a kill in Advanced Warfare, and the sign comes up plus 100, I find that a lot of the time, whenever it shows up as like plus 100, I can't really see it too well. Like, for example, I was playing on, what map? I was playing on, I uh, can't remember what it's called, but it's like the map in Detroit. And when I was getting kills, I, I couldn't tell if I was getting like 100 points or like two kills. Um, just because I couldn't even tell if I was killing the guy because I was looking up sort of to kill them because I was down below. Whenever I'd kill them, the, like, what am I saying? The plus 100 was so white that I just couldn't see it when I killed them, which was quite frustrating because it was just frustrating in general. Where in Black Ops 3, also the hit markers in Black Ops 3 have a black border around the white thing, uh, which I just think makes them easier to see. And one other thing that changed in Black Ops 3 is that if you get a multi-kill sometimes, it'll only say plus 100, which I kind of find frustrating because I can't tell sometimes when I get kill both of the guys and I end up shooting for a couple extra seconds. But overall, the that's just a very minor detail that I don't really think really affects the overall game. Next is the melee mechanics in these games. Now, in Advanced Warfare, there's a crap ton of panic knifing, and I find that knifing is so easy. But in Black Ops 3, they change it. It's a two-hit kill knife from the front, because um, you just hit them with the butt of your gun. But if you are behind them, it will be a one-hit kill, which I find to be that was a very smart idea. But some people have gotten really good at running the combat knife as their secondary, which the basic secondary is just fists instead of a knife. And the combat knife does take up when you're pick 10. And they just like switch to the combat knife quickly and just knife. Which I find fine because you are taking up a slot of your pick 10. So I don't really have too many complaints about that. I find the melee system to be a lot better in Call of Duty Black Ops 3. Um, something in Advanced Warfare that a lot of people did find frustrating were the weapon variants. So for example, the ASM1 speakeasy is way better than the base ASM-1. I mean, a lot of these variants are just so much, like, the ARX-160 isn't that great of a gun, but the Steel Bite is one of the best guns in the game. It just makes it kind of annoying because not everyone has access to those guns. That's why previously, when releasing DLC, the people are very cautious, the developers are very cautious to make the guns not overpower, so people don't complain about them. And that's why what Advanced Warfare has done is they release guns like the SCG-44, that they can make them overpowered because everyone can get them. Um, but the variants, honestly, are a good kind of a good idea as a business model because they keep people playing the game for longer. 
but an idea to balance the variants was if you use a weapon variant, take away one or two points from the pick 10. I think oh, it's actually pick 13 in Advanced Warfare, but take away one or two points from it because that would overall just balance it a bit more because like you could either choose to have that variant, which basically is just like adding more attachments, or you could just like not use a variant and get extra points to like put more attachments on the gun or pick a grenade or something. And uh, something else is that in Black Ops 3, you can put six attachments on a gun, which again, I'm fine with. This is kind of like variants because you can make a gun so customizable, but the thing you lose there is, yeah, you lose points towards your pick 10. And uh, you can't really run any perks or anything if you put all six attachments on the gun. Uh, next is fall damage. Very small. There's no fall damage in Black Ops 3. I mean, there's quite a bit of fall damage in Black Ops 3. If you jump off a very high light, you will take fall damage. Um, and a lot of these specialist abilities in Black Ops 3 um, were exo abilities. So, like, cloak was an exo ability. Speed was an exo ability. Um, which I find kind of weird because, for example... The cloak ability, I mean, it's just not nearly as good as some of the other uh, specialist abilities, and it doesn't last nearly as long as the Advanced Warfare one did, which I just find kind of weird. Um, next is the grenades. Uh, the grenades in Advanced Warfare, um, some of the clips in this might show it, but I get, like, cross-map grenade kills, and I don't normally do this because I just find it to be very annoying in general, but I was just trying to get some clips for this specifically talk about that. Because you can shoot grenades all the way across the map almost. In Black Ops 3, the grenades are more powerful though. Um, which, I don't know, I mean, a lot of the time I found myself getting triple kills with grenades. Which, in Advanced Warfare, you can only get if you threw it onto an objective. But like, I could throw it into a hallway and get the triple kill. Um, next is uh, Domination. Uh, these I'm going to get into game mode, talking about game modes now. Uh, domination, you get 50 points for capping your gimme objective, which I agree with because it makes the streaks harder to get. Um, but you do get 200 points for capping the central objective right off the bat of the game. And you get 200 points for kills on the objective, which I find to be a very smart idea. It enforces a more objective-based game uh, because you can get your streaks easier if you're on the objective. And I always found that a very good strategy to rush objective B and then mow down the enemies while they're coming. You can get your streaks right off the bat. Next, in Kill Confirmed, when you capture uh, a tag, after, when you kill someone and then you capture their tag, you get 100 points instead of 50 in Advanced Warfare. And lastly, in Search and Destroy, I, I didn't play all the game modes in Black Ops 3, like, I didn't play Uplink, so I won't know, like, if stuff changed in that, but I'm just talking about the game as they did play. Uh, Search and Destroy in Advanced Warfare was up to six. The like you had to win six rounds to win. And in Black Ops 3, it's only up to four. And now we're gonna talk about some of the perks. There's no more toughness in Black Ops 3, uh, which I I agree with taking toughness away because it was a pretty crutch perk. You had to run toughness in Advanced Warfare in previous COD games. Although I find that they should reduce the kick because if toughness, for example, is Let's say toughness is 0, and then the kick with no toughness is 10. It's more than a 7, closer to no toughness, than a 5, which I think would be a better sweet spot. Um, lastly is the exo pings in Advanced Warfare are more pronounced. A lot of people, if you're not really looking at your minimap specifically, you will not see the exo pings in Black Ops 3, or the boost pings. And uh, that sort of makes Blast Suppressor less of a crutch perk in Black Ops 3, because so many people ramp Blast Suppressor. Advanced Warfare. And lastly, one of the more frustrating things in Black Ops 3, one of the things I sort of, one of the only bad things I have to say about the game is the Black Hat attach, um, Black Hat uh, Tactical Grenade. You can hack the enemy's score streaks, um, which I just find to be really overpowered. Like, you, I, I've i been in a mothership before. My Elgato wasn't plugged in, which is so annoying. I didn't earn the mothership because I never got to 43. But my team got a mothership and you can hop in. There's no way anyone would be able to take it down because the mothership can, like, wall bang everyone. And, like, there's no way you're taking a mothership down. Like, because it, it takes two of them to hack bigger streaks. But stuff like the wraith that's automated, um, you can ha hack an enemy wraith. You can hack an enemy VSAT. 
I mean, there's just, and you can easily hack an enemy UAV or counter UAV. And I under, I would understand if it maybe takes two of them to hack the enemy UAV and counter UAV, but being able to hack the bigger streaks is just unfair because any noob sitting in the corner can hack a streak when someone got like 15 kills to get that streak and then the enemy just takes it away from them. I just find that really stupid and I think that's one of the only things they should take out of the game. Another thing is rejack, although now I find that rejack is sort of just like a tactical insert. I mean, you can, for example, you don't have to spawn back at the base, but... And you can probably get a couple kills and surprise people. It is frustrating, but just because it's frustrating doesn't mean it's overpowered. It's not overpowered anymore. It's just frustrating, and I don't think they're going to take it out of the game. I mean, people are saying take it out of the game, take it out of the game. But the specialist abilities are something they put a ton of development time into. And um, then if they took that away, they'd have to take away the hive also, because they wouldn't have a specialist just have the weapon. Um, so I don't think they would take that out of the game, but... Taking out something like the Black Hat would be easy. They obviously didn't have to spend too much development time on it. They probably think it's really cool, but again, like I said, they wouldn't have to take it out. They could just limit it to UAVs, counter UAVs, stuff like that. So that's been it for this video, guys. This is a very long video. I did go fairly in-depth comparing these two games, and I hope you enjoyed. Please subscribe here at the Call of Duty Gamer for much more content on everything in the Call of Duty universe. So that's a bit of it for this video, guys, and thanks for watching. Yeah.